Good morning, friends. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona, and I welcome you to this televised liturgy. So my friends, as we continue our celebration today on this fourth Sunday of Lent, let us be mindful of the mercy of God and particularly in our gospel today of the prodigal son. The father who sees his son from a distance forgives him before the son even gets a chance to ask that forgiveness, speaks to us of the same kind of mercy that God has toward us. And so we continue our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let's quiet our hearts a moment first, just to remember our sins, asking God's mercy and God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you plead for us at the right hand of God our Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped in Gilgal, on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste, Taste and, and see, see the goodness, the goodness of, of the Lord. Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste, Taste and, and see, see the, the goodness, goodness of, of the, the Lord. Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste, Taste and, and see, see the, the goodness, goodness of the, of the Lord. Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. Taste and, Taste and see, see the, goodness the goodness of the, of the Lord. Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God 
who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will get up and go to my father and shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons. And the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. And so the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set out to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. And when he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend to the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered the servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. And the servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry. And when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a kid goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. And he said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise to you Lord Jesus Christ.
How many times have we heard this gospel? And how many times do we wonder about that son who abandoned his own family, dad and brother, and squandered everything that was his? Righteously so, it was his, but how he squandered it. And then to return home and have the other brother who's hung in there for all those years get angry. But the story, I think, is more about the father. The father, who obviously was very hurt by his son's leaving, collecting his inheritance early. So it's amazing to me, as it speaks in the gospel, the son on his return home, the prodigal son, and from a distance. It says, while he was still a long way off, the father caught sight of him, filled with compassion, ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. Obviously, the father had gotten rid of his anger. He, even his disappointment, the fact that his son is home again. Before the son could even say, I'm sorry, the father had forgiven him. You know, I was just raised out here on the edge of Mankato on a little kind of a hobby farm. We only had a couple of acres, but we had a chicken coop, and we had a granary, and we had a barn, and a couple of outbuildings, and but we had ducks and chickens, and we were raising them and collecting eggs every day and had to feed them and water them regularly, you know, and it was my turn to water the ducks and chickens one night in this little concrete chicken coop that we had made out of blocks, concrete blocks. And I remember running down there to water those ducks and chickens, and we had a big trough a tank that had been welded, cut down the middle with a cutting torch, and that's how we put the water. So I turned on the water, and it was so cold out that night, it was freezing cold. So I ran down there from the house, turned on the water, ran back up to the house, and thought, well, I'll just go down and shut it off later. But I forgot. It ran all night. And I'll never forget that Saturday morning waking up. We were out in the kitchen having a big breakfast, mom and dad, and all of us, the five of us boys. And all of a sudden, I see my dad looking down toward the chicken coop, and I hear him say, what the heck? Except he didn't say heck. And we all kind of run over and working down there, and here, the chicken coop, had a split down the middle of it, and there was water running out of it, the cracks. My dad took off running down there and came back up to the house a few minutes later, and first thing he says, who left the water on last night? And I panicked. Hadn't even thought about it since the time I lifted up that handle and turned on the spigot. And I remember my mother looking at my dad with this sort of oh no, and then she looked over at me and looked away quick before my dad made the connection, and my dad just started shaking his head, and I thought, I am in for it. But what really amazed me is, he said, we're going to need you boys to help me today because we're going to be butchering ducks and chickens all day because some of them were frozen in the ice. The water's about uh, two, three feet deep in there, and the building is split. You could stand on the outside of the building and look all the way through out the other side of that little concrete chicken coop. And yes, we butchered ducks and chickens all day. My brother Terry and I are the ones who usually watered and fed those birds. And I remember my brother Terry coming up to me afterward and saying, Joe, I'm glad you left that water on because we don't have to mess around feeding and watering and picking eggs anymore. At least he felt good about it. But you know what? It's about my dad here. He did not get angry, and my dad could get angry. He acted like I never did that. Never ever pulled me aside to get angry, sit down with me. My mother never did. Dad just kind of let it go. It's sort of like maybe he understood. Maybe he'd had an experience like that in his own life. I don't know. But I honestly believe when I look at this story. Listen to the prodigal son. It's the father here who was the merciful one, the father who is so quick to forgive and to forget and to let go. My dad never brought that story up the rest of his life. My mother did a couple of times to us, to me. Today, let's invite that same God, that healing, loving, and forgiving God 
into our lives during this Lenten season. To know the mercy of a God who loves that much, like the Father who so loved his prodigal son, the son didn't even have to ask forgiveness, and the Father already forgave him. Let us pray for that same kind of gift of love in our lives, that same kind of forgiveness, and that same kind of trust. And so in that faith now, we turn to our God as we pray our creed. For I believe in, in one, one God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, the Almighty, maker, maker of, heaven of heaven and earth, earth of all, all things, things visible and invisible. And invisible. I believe, I believe in, in one Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the only begotten God, Son of God, born of the Father, Father before all ages, ages God, God from God, God light from light, light true God from true God, God, God begotten not, not made, made consubstantial with, with the Father. Father. Through him Through all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. And so we turn now to our God with our prayers of the faithful, remembering the many good gifts that God does give us, but also the needs yet that we lift up to our loving Father. For all who serve the church, may the promptings of the Holy Spirit be their guide. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civic leaders, May God increase in them a willingness to be led by the Holy Spirit and by truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who might have been abandoned or feel isolated, may they know the love of God and the embrace and the compassion of our own communities of the faithful in our church and give them hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who may benefit from the alms that we share during this Lenten season, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the souls of the faithful departed, may they enjoy the eternal dwelling place prepared for them by the Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So, merciful Father, how great and just are you. Kindly hear the prayers we offer this day through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. So open the mystery of this water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ. For all of us come to share in the love of humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offered you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash away my sins, cleanse me of all my iniquity. So, my friends, let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
of the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Let us pray. And so we place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, a Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out without end as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so you are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all those who minister and serve in your churches. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So at the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the kingdom and the power and the, and the glory, glory are yours, yours now, and now and forever. forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We can share a sign of our Lord's peace with each other. Thank you. Peace and God bless. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. Of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that you should, should enter under, under my, my roof, roof but, but only say, say the, the word, word and, and my soul, soul shall be healed. Let us offer our prayer of thanksgiving. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We go in peace then to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Good morning. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday's televised Mass. I hope it has brought you spiritual joy and comfort this day. Our broadcast cannot continue without your support. Please consider sending a donation to TV Mass at Post Office Box 588, Winona, Minnesota 55987.